journal. This is where we record all of the amazing things God has taught us about himself because God's word is good and we can read it, love it, and understand it. We've made it to season two of the podcast and I am very excited about what's about to happen. Season one saw us explore eight different topics about the Bible, our faith, and other practical parts about the Christian life. For season two, however, we are going to just be talking about what we learned from a particular book of the Bible, Ruth. I've asked my mom to join us for this season, and instead of us having an outline for every episode, we are discussing the book of Ruth like we normally would in a Bible study. I can't wait to get started, so here we go, diving headfirst into Ruth. Well, welcome to Ruth. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Diane. (laughs) So welcome to the podcast, season two, Mom. Oh, my. You're going to be on so much this season, you're practically a feature. Oh, my. (laughs) So much stress. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I, I really do consider this a privilege because I am your mom and you are my, my physical daughter, but in the faith, you're my sister. And as iron sharpens iron, you keep me on track as well. Mm-hmm. And I, I love that about you. And um, I just consider it a privilege to get to be here. And I um, I enjoy our conversations. Mm-hmm. Speaking of conversations, we just want to invite at this moment for anyone listening that that's really all today is. Um, usually when we get together, even on the really heavy topics like forgiveness, we come in with an outline prepared. And this time I would literally challenge my mom less than a week ago, hey, let's do this on Ruth. And she's like, okay. (laughs) Well, the first time we studied Ruth together, you must have been about five years old. Mm -hmm. And, um, we did it with flannel graph and we did the same story, (laughs) the same part for an entire week. I think we covered maybe the first, we might have covered the whole book. It's only four chapters long. Yeah. Um, And by the end of the week, I would, you know, I I get where I read the the book, and God said, my words will not return to me void. So I never cared if a five-year-old could understand what was going on or not. Mm Mm-hmm. And by by the... by the end of the thing, you were putting up the pictures and taking them down yourself because I couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing that I really love is that, so that was when I was five years old. Yeah. And I know we've talked about it multiple times. Yeah. Uh, we bring up different aspects of this. But the thing that is important, I think, to remember is that the way you study can change over time. And it's not just because you got older, like, because, yeah, now that was a long time ago for me. But sitting in front of us now, between the two of us, there are five Bibles open on this table. Yeah. And that's because the way we study changes and the way we use our resources can change. Because as you get some or you just really get fall in love with some, um, I know that one of the Bibles I've had, I've had for several years now. I love it. But another one I've only been using for a few months now. Yeah. Yeah, well, I um, got for Christmas a, uh, a, what is it, a CSB? Mm -hmm. It's by Holman. They're they're the publishers. And before that, I really, really loved NASB 95. Well, man, since then, I'm like, oh, this Bible reads so well. I love this Bible. (laughs) (laughs) But the important thing doesn't matter so much which Bible you pick go get your go get yours read along with us Mm -hmm. Uh, I just want to acknowledge though that I'm not the teacher Diane's not the teacher the Holy Spirit is the teacher and God said his word will not return to him void Mm -hmm. I trusted that when the girls were little and I still trust him with that that when um, when we read his word it does not return to him void and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to read the book of Ruth, and it's in the Old Testament. And we're just going to let God say what he wants to say. Now, some people, when they start reading the book of Ruth, will actually start in the book of Judges, which is the book before, and they read the very last part of that book because it runs right into Ruth, almost as though Ruth should be part of the Judges. Mm-hmm. 
So it says in Judges chapter 21, verse 25, it says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what seemed right to him. So now starting in Ruth chapter 1. During the time of the judges, there was a famine in the land. A man left Bethlehem in, Judea, in Judah with his wife and two sons to stay in the territory of Moab for a while. The man's name was Elimelech, and his wife's name was Naomi. The names of his two sons were Mahalon and Chilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. They entered the fields of Moab and settled there. Naomi's husband Elimelech died, and she was left with her two sons. Her sons took Moabite women as their wives. One was named Orpah, and the second was named Ruth, and they lived in Moab about ten years. Both Mahalon and Chilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two children and without her husband. So she and her daughters-in-law set out to return from the territory of Moab because they'd heard in Moab that the Lord paid attention to his people's need by providing them food. She left the place where they had been living, accompanied by her two daughters-in-law, and traveled along the road leading back to the land of Judah. Naomi said to them, Each of you go back to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown the dead and to me. May the Lord grant each of you rest in the house of a new husband. She kissed them, and they wept loudly. They said to her, We insist on returning with you to your people. But Naomi replied, Return home, my daughters. Would you want to go with me? Am I able to have any more sons who can become your daughters? You return home, my daughters. Go on, for I'm too old to have another husband. And even if I thought there were still hope for me to have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you be willing to wait for them to grow up? Would you restrain yourselves from me marrying? No, my daughters, my life is much too bitter for you to share, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. Again they wept loudly, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Naomi said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Follow your sister-in-law. But Ruth replied, Don't plead with me to abandon you or to return and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me, and do so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped talking to her. The two of them traveled until they came to Bethlehem, and when they entered Bethlehem, the whole town was excited about their arrival, and the local women exclaimed, Oh, oh, can this be Naomi? And Naomi said, Don't call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has made me very bitter. I went away full, but God has brought me back empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has opposed me and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi came back from the territory of Moab with her daughter-in-law Ruth, the Moabitess. They arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Mm. What a first chapter of a story. Yeah. So what exactly happened here? Well, when did well let's let's break it down into in, into the questions. When did this happen? Well, this it says very clearly during the days of the judges. Mm -hmm. Now I did a little looking to see when exactly this was. That that's literally the only clue. Now the period of the judges was between 1375 BC and 1050 BC. Okay. But that's when this story takes place. 
So it's old. Very. I mean, it's, this is beyond, this is, that's old enough that it's beyond my grasp of how old it is. Mm -hmm. Um, The period of the judges, like you said, was about 400 years, so, and. It was also a really dark period. Mm Mm-hmm, because everybody was doing what they thought was right. Well, Mm -hmm. that's like, why did, you know, that's the Bible's way almost of saying they were running amok. Yeah. (laughs) Well, in the Judges, that was a really dark period because it was this constant cycle. Yes, downward even. Yeah, of just like, they would follow God, and then they'd stop following God, and then one and of then their... And then they'd fall into sin. Yeah, and then their enemies would overrun them, and then they'd cry out, mm-hmm. God save us, and then they have a judge arise, which is where you get Samson, and Gideon, and Deborah, and all these great judges. Um, some of them great, some of them not. Um, and then they'd be like, oh, yay, Jesus and God and stuff. And like, they didn't have Jesus yet, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And then the cycle would start over. Yeah. So it was a dark time. Well, it, and, and it was a time of famine. And, um, the fact that this is a daughter-in-law, mother-in-law, I do not particularly associate with Naomi. And this is why. I don't have a husband and sons who have died. Um, so I don't understand that stress. I've never been in a famine, although I have. I was raised in a desert, so I understand being concerned about no water. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've never. I have never experienced food shortage, even mm-hmm. with empty grocery shelves, mm-hmm. at times. Um, so I don't understand this, and I don't. I don't. I don't want to pick on Naomi, which it sounded like I kind of was, but because the thing is, she's in tremendous grief Mm -hmm. and despair. And And there's no reason to read the Bible like it's boring. Yeah. she. I mean, this woman hurts all over the place. And the fact that her emotions, which is what happens to us, we think, oh, God's mad at me. This Mm -hmm. is, you know, when... Okay, now, when I checked the commentaries, there was kind of a divide. Um, was leaving Bethlehem a good thing? I think, honestly, I mean, when you look into the name of Bethlehem, it means the house of bread. Yeah. And I left the house of bread during a famine, so it's kind of like, what were you thinking? But at the same time... There was no bread there. Yeah. So there's, and there's no real scriptural evidence that Naomi did anything wrong. Well, in fact, if her husband wanted to go, the husband being the head of the household... She is being obedient to him. Yes. Yes. And it may have been that there that, that part of the reason that her kids were um their names mean sickly and puny that they 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 may have had specific need of that. Mhm. Um because yes, Malon means puny and Chil- Killian as some people call it is sickly. Mhm. Um Naomi, the reason why she says call me Mara is because her name means pleasant. Elimelech means God is my king. Uh, the other name mentioned was Orpah, which means fawn. And then there's Ruth, which means beautiful in face and character. So in the Bible, when it comes to name meanings, typically that gives you a clue on their personality. Typically it does. So for Elimelech, God is my king. Yeah, he dies right at the beginning. But at the same time, you have to think about the situation and what 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 would have been the right choice. Yeah, because these are real people mm-hmm. in real times in dire situations. Yeah, and f- for us to pick a pick and say, well, that was wrong. They shouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's hindsight, and well, that's not fair. And when you're reading the historical narrative in the Bible, more often than not, it's being descriptive rather than prescriptive. So okay, it describes things. So the Bible will describe things that happens. That doesn't necessarily mean that you should do the same. Okay. Especially think about this in any time that someone does something like, um, and they were the most wicked king ever. Like, that's not a goal to be. That's not something. <laughs> I'll show you. I can be worse than that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's not a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and so you may not. You, if you were in that situation, you may have stayed in Bethlehem, but then again, you may have gone with them. Yeah. Well, and it was very common. During famines, they would go to Egypt. Yes. I mean, it... Mm-hmm. 
that's just what happened. And the fact that they died, yeah, and when I read died, I did that in the southern way. You know, we always... And they passed. Yeah, and we... And you you turn your head down and you kind of... Give it a little nod. Yeah, and then you go on with your life. <laughs> um, <laughs> but just something that I went through when I was doing the study... I went through and marked every reference to Naomi in purple, mm-hmm. and I marked every reference to Ruth, including all the pronouns, in pink. And so when you read this, Naomi has a lot of I am I um, pronouns. Like, she talks quite a bit in this chapter. Mm-hmm. And overall, you get this feeling that, first off, this is one of the more emotional books of the Bible, and what I mean by that is that usually in narratives you just see the actions, you don't see the motives. Well, I recently read um, Liz Curtis his, Higgs book, uh, The Girl Still Got It, mm-hmm. which is about Ruth. And she, one of the things that, that she threw out there was this may have been written by women. Mm-hmm. Um, it's part of the oral history and that was carried on by women because it's so women strong and the mm-hmm. thing is both of these women are very strong and when mm-hmm. Naomi uh, turns when Ruth makes this wonderful uh, this is covenant talk and it's mm-hmm. often read at, at weddings uh, uh, your people will be my people where you die will die um, all of that There's I, I counted out seven specific commitments for that Um, Ruth makes and it's really a covenant and the reason why I would call it a covenant is because it's one line may the Lord do so to me and more also if anything but death parts me from you and that's and the confession your God will be my God that is very significant because Moabites did not worship the God of Israel they worshipped um, Ashtoreth's husband yes um, who and that he was a fertility God and often there was human sacrifice involved in it. Yeah, that uh, Chemosh or Baal or uh, Karkamesh, I think is another term. And uh, uh, starts with an M. Moloch? Moloch. That's it. Um, but the thing that I found really interesting is that how often that we forget about Orpah in this case. Um, now, there, that one I can clearly say that I think that was a bad choice. Yeah. Um, Because she cries just as hard as Ruth does. When -hmm. when they get the... Okay, so first off, it sounds like by the way this reads that Orpah and Ruth were both married to their husbands for about 10 years. Yes. So they were married a long time. And neither of them had a child. That's true. That's very unusual. This is a an Eastern or Near Eastern um, society. It's very old. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... Um, um, in the Eastern society, the oldest born son Mm -hmm. is everything. And, and that's wealth. Um, so when the children die, especially the sons, it, 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 it's a problem. Yes. You have lost. So my point is though. One of the things that I noticed is that how many times that I don't want to be an Orpra, but I know her. Mm-hmm. Because this is the same type of person I feel like as who's gone through all the hard situations, has seen all the things, have gone to these like um, conferences or camps, you know, where there's this big come to the altar moment and there's all these tears and you're like, I'm never going to go back there. I'm going to live for Jesus. I'm going to do all this. And then you go home and nothing happens. Yeah. Because that's one of the things... Ruth repents from her old past and her old gods and her old way of living. Because mm-hmm. repent means to change your mind and change your ways. And change your direction. Yes. It's a change of direction. Mm-hmm. And so she turns to the God of Israel, the God of the Bible, you know, our holy God. And she turns away from the Baals and the Astras and all that. And so she makes a true repentance Orpa probably felt really bad, what, but she did not repent. Yeah, yeah. She may have felt convicted, but that's not the same. Yeah, and Naomi, when she she stopped talking to Ruth, we have to remember this woman is walking shell shock. 
-hmm. and walking is probably as much energy as she had Mm -hmm. at this point I mean this was okay so Naomi moves with her family Um, all the men die and she but in the meantime her her sons have married Uh, they start to come back to Israel and she says leave me alone and go back to your family and one of them clings to her one of them goes back. Well, the other thing that I found interesting is that word that Ruth clung to her, as it says in ESV. That's the same word that, as King James calls it in Genesis, the cleave to your wife. It's that sticking together like glue. Mm-hmm. It's that word that's really, like, you're you're going to hang on for dear life and yeah. not let go. Yeah, yes, and even though Ruth is saying this to her mother-in-law, mm-hmm. um that is that is that that is uh off like i said this is often read at weddings i think it was read over your father and i at our wedding Mm -hmm. and when they come back to bethlehem they haven't lived in that house for at least 10 years maybe longer um and all the women are there and um which would mean that it's probably close to time to go get water so they come back probably early early morning or late evening and there's a big stir. Look, it's Naomi. It's Naomi. And um, and who's that with you? Yeah. Um, but it is the beginning of the barley harvest, and that gives us that sets the stage for the next chapter. For the next chapter, which we'll get to next week. All right. Yes. Yes. But one last thing is, you know, coming through this. The Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me, and I went away full, and he's brought me back empty. Did he really bring her back empty? Because she came back with Ruth. Well, and um, the thing is, your emotions are mm-hmm. desperately wicked. Your heart is desperately wicked and will lie to you. We're not minimizing her grief here. No. Or her depression. But that's simply not true about God. Mm -hmm. When you bring glory to God, you speak accurately of his character. And she may have felt like that, Mm -hmm. but that's not what was going on here. And Well, Naomi, she was in the thick of it at that point. Right. And And God knowing what's going to happen next, and the rest of us, if we've read ahead in the book, we know that this is just simply not the case. Because her emotions were very real. But they were not reliable. Right. And that is true of us as well. Mm-hmm. That is true of us as well. Um. But um, as we see, you know, as we get into the rest of the book, this is the, the setup part. Mm-hmm. So as someone who studied story structure and specifically like a screenwriting and movies and just how do things work, because that's my day job, um... This is what we would call Act One, mm-hmm. because it sets up the characters, it sets up the conflict, and it even starts to set up the setting. And and the thing is, as far as 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 the whole Bible goes, we've read over it a couple of times, mm-hmm. and never even caught on to it yet. But there's there's foreshadowing in this book that takes place in the rest of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Would you like me to tell you what they are? Sure. Okay. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem and Judah. Mm -hmm. We don't know anything about them except that that's where they lived. That's where they were from. Right? Mm -hmm. They arrive, they walk back. It's probably um, less than two weeks of a walk from Moab to Bethlehem. Because they Um, have to walk around the Dead Sea. Right. Exactly. And... um, you know, being being older and being depressed, they probably didn't walk real fast. Yeah. Um, so they and and then they arrived in in Bethlehem again at the beginning of the barley harvest. Now, barley is not a real nourishing grain when it comes to uh, grains that we have. It's a little dry. Uh, we make beer out of barley. Hops and barley is what you know. When I think barley, I think um, 
uh, as an additive for vegetable soup, because <laughs> that's how my family has always used it. And um, it's used in uh, the main grain for brewing beer. Um, it's also, uh, a lot of times I know it's even fed to cattle. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a real, it's not a real nourishing grain. Mm-hmm. But that happens in the March time frame in Israel. Yeah. And what they would do when they harvested, they would, they would uh, harvest, they would either with a scythe or they'd pull it up and then they'd have to bundle it. So being at the beginning of the harvest was not, it was a good thing. Yeah. So they basically, you already are seeing God's work of his timing. Yes. Without, without any real that's the thing about this book this book is very strange because i also when i went through and marked naomi and i marked ruth i also marked references to god Mm -hmm. he's only mentioned he's mentioned quite a bit not as much as you expect but he's only like god does anything directly or actively until the very end but yet at the same time he's very clearly in everything because to me, this is like one of the more practical views of God, because this is what my life is like. Because later it says, now Ruth happened to go to this part, right? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that next week. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, I'm excited. We need, we need, yeah, we, we, we are. And so I think, I think we've got as much as we're going to get out of, out of uh, chapter one. We've got the stages set. Mm-hmm. We've got the characters, and we know where they are. My only thing that I want to end on is that there's a verse right at the beginning of, in the first chapter, in verse 8, where in NIV it says, Now Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness, and whom you have shown kindness to the dead, and to your husbands, and to me. only reason I say that is because I feel like that sets up the theme of the book. Mm Mm-hmm. Because already we're seeing character, and also that word kindness used there, that's that loyal covenant love. And so it's not translated love into English because we don't have an, another word for it. Is that that steadfast love? From... It's that it's that chesed. Yes. It's the loving kindness love. Um, it's that word that it's the unmerited favor, so it's the heavy emotion part but it's directly tied to a covenant partner. Yeah, and, and so the and fact to an action word. Yes. And so the fact that Naomi says because may the Lord show you kindness, that is that type of word. And to the person that she is showing this to is the gentile, the people not part of the covenant. Mm-hmm. And that is important because we need to set up what the whole structure and what the whole picture of the entire book is about. So well, that's a... the entire book being the Bible is about yeah. because, you know, God says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all. It's not a we, they thing. No. God loves them. God hates them. God's not using them. No, that's not it at all. No. God is the God of all, and he loves each one of us. And, you know, he can pluck us out of the sea of humanity. Mm-hmm. And, and especially since, because... Naomi basically says, may the Lord show you that chesed kindness. Mm -hmm. And the next thing that we see that is that interaction where Ruth is like, no, your God be my God. And at that moment, your people, my people, she is putting herself into that covenant. Yes. She is making that conversion. And that conversion, honestly, is open to any of us. Yes. So you can decide today if you want the God of the Bible the God of Naomi, God of Ruth now, to be your God. And if you'd like to do that, keep listening, keep watching, because the rest of the book of Ruth is really what this is about.